This episode of the Run Lift Mom podcast is brought to you by my weekly newsletter, Two on Tuesday. Two on Tuesday is a direct response to those listeners who said, Hey, Suze, I want to keep up with what's going on on the podcast and with Zia Active, but I need to do it in a place off of social media. Friend, I've got you. All you're going to do is go to runliftmompod.com. Scroll on down to the big box that says subscribe to keep in the loop. Then I'm going to be in your inbox every Tuesday with two things you can use throughout the week related to Zaya, related to the podcast. You're going to love it. That's runliftmompod.com and then scroll down where it says subscribe to keep in the loop. Welcome to the Run Lift Mom podcast, where we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order. Today, we're going to talk about something loosely related that I know you love, and that is wine. I have got Yaku Vinnings, who is a winemaker. You guys, he's the founder of The Grape Unknown, which is virtual wine tastings, as well as online wine education, and his mission is to make wine more accessible and enjoyable to understand. He's going to talk to us about how wine is made, how we should store it, and of course, encourage us to enjoy it, mama. (laughs) So without further ado, here is winemaker Yaku Bennings. All right. Welcome, Yaku Bennings, to the Run Lift Mom podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing fabulous, Susie. Thanks for having me. You know, you are on Run, Lift, Mom, but I often joke that when we can get the right gentleman on the show, we sure will. And you are here to talk to us today about wine. Yes, wine it is. Um, I mean, everybody loves wine, right? Well, I hope so. <laughs> I, I hope this is the right podcast or that. Yeah. No, um, I'm happy to be here. It's awesome. Uh, I, love what you, I love the podcast. love what you guys are doing. Um, and I'm ready to talk about some wine. Tell me how you became involved in winemaking. So I'm originally from South Africa. And, uh, you know, as a a high school student, you kind of have to decide in South Africa exactly what you have to go study as soon as you get out of high school, actually the year before. And so I went to write these tests and this lady told me like, you'll be good at, you know, accounting and science and all these kind of things. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to sit behind the desk. And she said, you'll, you'll, you'll also be, you can also be a winemaker. I'm like, okay, I'm listening. What, what, what's, what's this all about? <laughs> um, and so she explained like it's science and it's, there's a lot of art involved in creating and crafting. I love to be artsy and, and creative. Uh, you work with your hands, but there's a lot of science involved that I also love. And so I actually went to university to study Phenology and viticulture, which was so knowledge is a study in wine and viticulture is a study in the vine. And then after that, I, I made wine across the world and made wine in South Africa and in France and in California. And then once I lived in California making wine, I lived in this very, very small town. And maybe some of you listeners this is from Northern California. It's called Fiddletown. Fiddletown has got a population of 18 people, right? So very, very small. Um, it's an old gold mining town. And uh, these people came through to film a movie and that's where I met my wife. And so we moved to Los Angeles and um, we opened up our own winery last year. Yeah. We've got a lot of folks listening, Yaku, who are busy moms, right? Mm. So like they're probably doing a grocery delivery service. Maybe they're going out for the um, occasional nice dinner out. Let me see the wine list. For the most part, though, we are doing our thing at home. Maybe we want to have some nice wine in the house. Can you talk us through some things to look for in general as we're shopping for wine? Excellent. Busy moms. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Yes. So the in here lies the problem, Susie. <laughs> so <laughs> if, when you when we're buying wine, the the uh, kind of a big issue. What makes it so difficult is that the label don't give you a lot of information. You only see where the wine is from, the price, uh, maybe what grapes we used to make the wine, and a small description. Because by law in in in, in the USA and almost everywhere in the world, you don't have to put any information other than the, a key amount of facts on there. Um, and this makes it very difficult. So here's a few things that you can look for when you do go shopping for your wine. So the first one is price. Now, obviously, if a wine is $5 versus the average that in America, I think it's 15 to 20, then there was corners cut creating that wine. So now I'm talking about quality, right? So if you think about, okay, we know we put red wine. It's so romantic. We take red wine and we put it in oak barrels and French oak barrels. And you know, it's so beautiful. It sits there in those barrels and it sits there for 12 months and it becomes delicious and beautiful. 
Well, for a $5 bottle of wine, I'm pretty sure they didn't do that. They actually just added maybe oak chips, like little chips of wood to the wine to give you, you the perception that it was in oak. So they're kind of cutting corners and it doesn't get the same quality to that wine. We'll also create it in bulk, right? You're not going to make a small batch wine come out to $5 a bottle, right? So the price is a big aspect as far as quality. So if you think about, you know, additives, there's many, many, many additives, the craziest things that we can add to wine. And if you have to make a wine that you know your, your end product, your end market, the busy mom wants it for $5, well, you're going to shape that wine to taste a certain way and you're going to add anything you can to it to keep the cost down to get to that point. Ah, so you mean things that might be dangerous for us? Dangerous, um, I I wouldn't say dangerous. I would just say things that you wouldn't want in your food or what you would rather want to. If you're living a natural life, you're you're, you're go, 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 but you want to live a good, healthy life, you're not going to... or maybe you're a, you're a vegan or you're a, you're a vegetarian or something like that. You don't, you wouldn't want gelatin, which is made from you know, boiling down animal parts, in your wine because that's used to fine out wine, right? right. It can be used rather. Uh, there's many different additives. And so, uh, for example, the wines that I make is uh, unfined. We don't put anything in the wine to kind of – and when I say fined, I mean when you drink a glass of wine, it's super clear, it's beautiful. Well, that you get it that way because there's nothing drifting in the wine, essentially. And you put something in the wine to get rid of that, right? So you can use different elements to get rid of that stuff. So the price is one issue that, that you know, you can kind of look at. So if you are going to buy $15 to $20, you, can, you know that some effort, some quality went into it. Another thing you can look at is, is the wine organic. If a wine is organic, that means, you, you know, you can, the, there's, not a lot, there's no sulfites added to the wine. Um, the wines were not used. The grapes wasn't any, no herbicides were used on the grapes, no pesticides were used on the grapes. Um, so that also gives you a hint as to how the wine was made. Great. But I think the biggest thing that you can look for, Susie, is uh, where the wine is from. So if a wine says it's from California, that means that we got the grapes from all over California or anywhere in California to make the wine. If it says it's from Paso Robles, which is a big region in California, then we know, okay, the grapes is just from Paso Robles. Or even the sub-region of Paso Robles, let's say, just an example, you, you know, people listening might not know this, but it's El Pumar. That's a sub-region. So if I buy a wine from El Pumar, I know that those grapes are very unique, a very specific region area. And it kind of speaks to also how the wine is made with quality rather than just being California. Fascinating. Oh, this is so fascinating. So price we're looking at, we're also looking at where it's made, just as general guidelines, like if we're at the grocery store. Absolutely. And I would say the last thing, which is probably the most helpful, and this is available to anybody. I have no affiliation with these people, um, but it's an app called The Vino, V Vino. And you literally just take a photo of the label. And I know if you're not shopping and you're getting it delivered, it might not work, but you can also you know, do it from, from your computer or type it in. And it tells you right there, if you're in the aisle, you're busy, you know, the kids are going crazy or they're not, they're very sweet, you know, however it goes. Um, you literally just snap a picture of the bottle and it tells you, this is how many stars this wine is. This is what other people said about it. It's good, it's not good. Simple as that. Oh, I love it. Listener, depending on where you're listening, you can either click the hyperlink that says details or you can swipe up in the player you're in. And of course, we're going to have Yaku's information in there, but we'll also link to the Vino. Yep, the Vino. Yep, you got it. Wonderful. Talk to us about if we are, if we do have wine at home, about storage best practices. This is a good one. Storage is always interesting uh, to talk about. So first of all, Susie, why would you store a wine at home? Let me ask you that. <laughs> um, I'm thinking, you know, um, maybe there's a special occasion coming up at the end of the month or something, or I mean, usually I'm going to drink all of my wine, but maybe there are some crazy people out there that don't. Exactly. You know, and, and all your listeners are sitting there driving, they're walking with it and they're nodding their heads as like, yes, I'm also going to say, I'm going to drink my wine. I'm not going to keep it. Right. So here's the thing we, if you keep wine at home for that occasion, for that special occasion, that's great. That That is awesome. Or maybe you just want to keep it because you're not ready to drink it yet. But then there's people that age their wine at home. They keep it there for years and years and years. And so just to that, if you were listening to this podcast and you're thinking, you know what? I it's Somewhere I've heard that it's good to kind of age wine. So I'm going to keep it for like five to 10 years before I drink it. Um, to those people, I just want to say that, you know, to the listeners, we as winemakers already age a wine most wines rather to the to perfection so that when you buy it in the store it is ready to drink 
in most cases. Okay, now just to clear that up. So let's say you did buy that wine right now. First of all, if you're buying a white wine or rosé wine, that stuff needs to be drank immediately. If you were buying a red wine, you can keep it a little bit longer. So the perfect conditions in your home for storing, let's look at what, what a wine doesn't like. A wine doesn't like very hot conditions. So think about temperatures over 70. Um, it impacts the flavors, the aromas. Um, you want a cool, dry place to be able to, to put this, right? So above 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, the wine almost starts cooking inside of the bottle. Not really, but it, it really is very damaging to the flavors and the aromas. Uh, another massive issue, and you can find this in states like where it gets very warm and cold, is temperature swings, right? So California, where it's hot in the day and very cold at night, hot, cold, hot, cold. So the wine actually contracts and expands, and, and that either would allow the bottle to leak, let oxygen in, which damages the wine a lot, and also is destructive to the chemistry of the wine, right? Um, another one is direct sunlight. Susie, have you ever wondered why a wine bottle ha has got green or brown glass? Most of them. Well, now I'm wondering, wondering, yeah. does it have to do with the temperature? It's sunlight, right? It's like sunglasses because sunlight mm. breaks down a lot of the organic compounds within a wine. So it acts like sun. So you you'd never want to leave wine in a sun. And you also see if you're shopping for wine and you're looking and you're at the store and you see that there's little windows above the store wall and the sun is shining directly in on the wine. It's not a great sign. Okay. Um, and the last one is not a necessity. A lot of people are like iffy about this one is to having the wine lay on its side or standing upright. So if you do have a wine with a cork, especially with a cork, lay it on its side so the wine is in contact with the cork, it keeps the cork moist, keeps it um, kind of expanded. Otherwise, it's going to kind of shrink and also allows oxygen or air to come in. But for us that keep our wine for maybe a week or two weeks or three weeks to the special occasion, um, you're in a very good place that even if you did all these wrong, your wine will still most likely be fine. So to wrap it up, get a cool, dark place with not a lot of temperature swings. Get the hallway closet, maybe the basement um, where it's nice and cool and dark and uh, you should be fine. This is so fantastic. Yaku, you're blowing my mind. Do you mind telling folks a little bit about your class that you offer um, if they want to connect with you more deeply? Absolutely. So the class is, uh, you can find us on grapeunknown.com. So we do a monthly uh, wine tasting where we kind of go over certain elements within um, wine that helps you appreciate it better. And this is for people that's new to wine. There's no snobbishness, no intimidation, people that's busy. It only takes one hour a month uh, that you need to come together. There's more to do if you want to. You can get involved in much, as much as you want. But essentially, we're a group of amazing wine lovers coming together once a month for an hour to talk about wine to kind of dive deeper and understand the why behind wine. Not just that you like wine. Everybody knows they like wine. Why do you like wine? That's what we look into. Oh, this is wonderful. Listener, again, I'm going to put this. You'll either click details, swipe up. Depends on the player that you're in. But you're going to be able to check out Yaku. You're going to be able to check out the app that we discussed as well as go deeper on his class. I'm also going to have your show notes as well, which will go a little bit more detail about what we talked about today. That's X. Oh, my show notes. Oh, yes. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Susie. Are we done here? <laughs> yes, we are done. <laughs> I mean, Cheers. The moms are so busy. No, thank you so much. I appreciate being here. Um, all the moms, you guys are doing such a fabulous job of being such, you, know, you guys are my heroes. Uh, absolutely. And thanks for having me. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Run, Lift, Mom podcast. I want to let you know that you can swipe up in the podcast player that you're in to see the show notes. That's going to take you to my website and you're going to get a deep dive on today's show. Cool, huh? You can think of it as a blog post that complements what was covered today with all of the links and resources discussed. Don't forget to check out the podcast partners as well with some really great offers for you. And until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8, and this has been the Run Lift Mom Podcast. Thank you for listening to Run Lift Mom. This show is sponsored by Zaya Active, Audible, and Rated Nutrition.